This can be you. Or this too. You may not see the possibilities just yet, but we do. At Metrobank, you have always been in good hands. We want to show you new opportunities. Open a brighter future. Spot potential. And be the bank that can move with you. Change with you. By being with you every step of the way. That's Meaningful Banking from Metro Bank. Corp is an emerging financial service provider. We offer various digital payment solutions to multinationals in Metro Manila and soon to the whole country. We believe that change is constant, so innovation is always necessary. By integrating blockchain technology in our offerings, clients can enjoy our fast yet secure financial services at competitive rates. ATC Exchange is a soon-to-be-launched digital currency platform where clients can buy and sell cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, investing in digital assets made more accessible and convenient. ATC Remittance App is an application dedicated to efficient money transfer and bills payment. Through the ATC Remittance App, clients can top up to their account to transfer money at their own convenience. Download the ATC Remittance app now and visit atcex.ph to start your digital journey. Honorable Dr. Benjamin Jokno, BSP Governor, Ambassador Benedicto Yuko, PCCI President, Mr. Ferdinand Tancinco, Metrobank Senior Executive Vice President. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Along with the coronavirus pandemic, the economy has been the dominant topic in daily news reports. Still, we cannot seem to get enough information about it. Like many of you, we are glued to the latest updates and are driven to dig even deeper. The intense interest, of course, has to do with assessing the economic damage that is still evolving and looking for prospects of recovery. This interest keeps many of us drawn to briefings and updates on the economy like this forum this morning. Today, Banco Central ng Pilipinas Governor Jokno has once again graciously accepted our invitation to speak this time to present his mid-year economic review along with the BSP policy directives and initiatives. Thank you, Governor, for being so gracious with your valuable time. And since we are here to listen to the Governor, let me conclude by expressing our appreciation to all those who made this forum possible. Mm -hmm. So on behalf of the Manila Times, thank you to our special partners, Atom Trans Tech Corp, Coex Star, Citibank, and the Metropolitan Bank and Trust Company, and of course, our official media partner, the Manila Times TV. Thank you also to all those joining us today, those watching this forum on the Manila Times website, the Manila Times Facebook page, the Times channels on YouTube and Dailymotion, and other social media platforms. And of course, today's event will also be reported in our print and digital editions tomorrow. So on behalf of the Manila Times, welcome, and may you all have a productive morning. Thank you. Uh, the President and CEO of the Manila Times, Mr. Dante Klink Ang II. Now, let me introduce our keynote speaker for this morning. Uh, so, Dr. Jokno is the current governor of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. Prior to his appointment, he served as the budget secretary from 2016 to 2019. On his third uh, tour of duty at the Department of Budget and Management, he pursued an expansionary fiscal policy to finance investments in human capital development 
and public infrastructure. As governor, he is not only pursuing the BSP mandates of price stability, financial stability, and an efficient payments and settlement system, but also endeavors to bring central banking closer to the people. His policy expertise and research contribution extend to various areas of ec uh, public economics. He has extensive experience in implement implementing reforms at the public sector, having also served as budget undersecretary from 1986 to 1991 and budget secretary from 1998 to 2001. He is the professor emeritus of the University of the Philippines, Diliman. Over more than 40 years, he taught the various, course various courses in economics and public policy. He was also chairman of the uh, Board of Trustees of the Pamantasan and Lugsod ng Maynila. He served as fiscal advisor to the Philippine Senate. He also served as chairman and CEO of the Philippine National Oil Company and chairman of the Local Water Utilities Administration. Uh, he finished his bachelor's degree in public administration from the University of the Philippines and earned his master's degree in public administration and economics from the same university. He also holds a Master of Arts in Political Economy from the John Hopkins uh, University of Baltimore, Maryland, USA, and a PhD in Economics from the Maxwell School of Citizenship and Public Affairs, Syracuse University in Syracuse, New York, USA. Let's all welcome uh, BSP Governor Benjamin Jokno. Thank you, uh, Manila Times President and CEO Dante Klink Ang II, Ambassador and PCCI President Benedicto Yuhiko, Metrobank Senior Executive Vice President Fernand Antonio Tancinco, other Manila Times officers and staff, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for inviting me to the Manila Times online forum on the 2020 mid-year economic review. This morning, I will fill you in on where the economy stands midway into a very interesting year, including the latest development in the country's monetary, financial, and external sectors. I will also discuss some of the recent BSP policies, initiatives, and measures to help the Philippine economy during this trying time. As you know, the Philippines went through years of difficult but necessary economic reform. The result of this process provided steady anchor for the country's economic resilience. Our economy has weathered different economic crises, political changes, and natural calamities. Still, the current COVID-19 pandemic is a crisis like no other. This pandemic has morphed into a full-blown global economic crisis. Yet the Philippines has had strong economic fundamentals, such as robust growth, good fiscal performance, and strong external and financial sector positions, which provided relative stability in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. In the first six months of 2020, inflation averaged at 2.5%. Monthly inflation has been on a decline since the start of 2020 from 2.9% in January to 2.5% in June. Year on year, food inflation decelerated, while non-food inflation also declined due to, in part, to lower domestic petroleum prices. Latest BSP baseline forecasts indicate that inflation could settle at 2.3%, which is at the lower end of the national government's target of 2 to 4% for 2020 and 2021. The instability of the Philippine banking system is also a source of strength for the domestic economy. As of end December 2019, universal and commercial banks posted a capital adequacy ratio of 15.4% on a solo basis and 16% on consolidated basis. This means that the bank's financial activities are supported by adequate capital, which is composed mainly of common equity 
and retained earnings. Quality of capital remains intact as universal and commercial banks industry posted higher leverage ratio at 9.4% solo basis and 9.9% on consolidated basis from its threshold of 5%. In addition, the banking industry has had low exposure to bad debts with a non-performing loans ratio of universal and commercial banks at a mere 1.9% and non-performing assets ratio at 1.6% as of end April 2020. One of the pillars of central banking is a safe and efficient payments and settlement system. On December 9th, 2015, the BSP and industry stakeholders launched the National Retail Payment System, NRPS, a policy and regulatory framework for the carrying out of retail payment activities through the BSP supervised financial institutions. Through the NRPS, the BSP endeavors to create a safe, reliable, affordable, interoperable, and efficient retail payment system in the country. Under the NRPS, BSP also encourages the use of electronic payments or modern financial technologies to enhance the speed, convenience, and affordability of financial transactions. This method of electronic payments will be at the forefront as the new economy transitions into the new economy. As of March 31, 2020, Personet has 50, 58 rather, participating institutions, while Instapay has 45. And both are expected to have more participating institutions in the coming years. The BSP is also encouraging the wide adoption of the national QR code standard, as well as the use of online payment facilities for government transactions. The launching of the e-government, e-GovPay facility to digitize government collections and disbursements will lead to more efficient government collection, better audit, and enhanced transparency. It also aims to eventually plug revenue leaks. eGovPay will be expanded to enable ordinary citizens to digitally pay government tax, fees, and charges. The BSP plays a supportive role in the promotion of inclusive economic and social development objectives of the government through its advocacy program aimed at promoting financial inclusion. The National Strategy for Financial Inclusion provides the national vision for financial inclusion and a platform for public and private sector coordination to ensure synergy of efforts in achieving shared objectives. Meanwhile, the range of microfinance loans offered by banks has broadened from regular microloans to microcredit for agriculture, housing, and business, as well as microinsurance in line with the growing needs and strengthened capacities of banks' clients. As of end 2019, a total of 154 banks with microfinance operations had been serving more than 2.4 million micro entrepreneurs. The total value of microfinance loans extended as of end 2019 amounted to 27.3 billion pesos, 20.7% higher than its level in 2018 at 22.6 billion. Meanwhile, Credit Surety Fund program is a credit enhancement scheme that allows micro, small, and medium enterprises, which are members of cooperatives, to borrow from banks using the CSF surety cover as security for the loan in lieu of conventional collateral. From its inception in 2008 until the end of 2019, a total of 55 CSFs located in 34 provinces and 21 cities 
have been established nationwide. Correspondingly, cumulative approved loans for 17,424 MSME beneficiaries reached 5.7 billion pesos. Amid this crisis, central banks around the globe are at the forefront to help their respective economies get through the uncertainties of this pandemic. The BSP responded by proactively implementing measures to ensure sufficient liquidity in the financial system, even as health and fiscal authorities impose measures that are addressed to the pandemic. The BSP's liquidity enhancing policies are intended to reassure markets, restore business confidence, and support recovery once the lockdowns are lifted. In the medium to long run, containment of the virus should lead to the resumption of business activities and economic growth, which should in turn encourage private sector investment and lending activities. The liquidity injection from BSP measures is estimated at around 1.3 trillion pesos, which is equivalent to 6.7% of GDP. Furthermore, the BSP approved a package of measures to further reduce the financial burden on loans to MSMEs. In particular, Loans granted to MSMEs shall be counted as part of the bank's compliance with reserve requirements. These measures likewise complement early monetary actions taken by the BSP to shore up market confidence and cushion domestic economic activity, along with various time-bound relaxation of various regulations. For example, calculation of penalties on required reserves and single bar borrower's limits, among others. With concerns of potential souring of loans coming from both businesses and households, the BSP deployed a range of regulatory relief measures that include approaches that could support the treatment and management of effective loans. The regulatory relief measures aim to encourage BSP supervised institutions to grant a temporary grace period for loan payments or to restructure the loan accounts of their borrowers. To summarize, allow me to highlight three main points from the presentation. First, the Philippines entered into the global pandemic with stronger macroeconomic position compared with its regional peers. The economy is well situated to restart its economic growth and development process. Second, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, the BSP implemented policy measures intended to reassure markets, restore business confidence, and ensure quick recovery once the lockdowns are lifted. However, let me assure you, that the decision to unwind COVID-19 policy responses will be gradual, prudent, and evidence-based. A well-thought-out disengagement strategy is necessary. Lastly, the BSP remains committed to deploy the necessary policy measures and reforms to help the Philippine economy recover from the COVID-19 crisis and to build its resilience against future crisis. Now let me close with an optimistic note. All the numbers I've cited earlier are true. Numbers don't lie. The rating agencies agree and the international observers agree. I foresee a hockey stick-like recovery with the lowest point in the second quarter. But the third quarter will be better, and the fourth will be even better. We expect a strong rebound 
in 2021 and 2022. The worst is over, but while we're not out of the woods yet, we have to look beyond this crisis. What else can we do to make the Philippines more robust and resilient? How do we prepare for the next crisis? Let me remind you again that we entered this crisis from a position of strength. So do I become hopeful or fearful? What can I do to calm the market? live with the virus, and prepare for a better tomorrow. I choose to be hopeful. Once again, thank you, and a pleasant morning to all. Thank you, uh, Governor Benjamin Jogno. So I am also hopeful, and I see a uh, you know the right direction towards weathering this global pandemic storm. Now to deliver his uh, message and reaction, uh, is Ambassador Benedicto uh, Yuiko, who has been elected as the new president of the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, or PCCI, the country's largest business organization. He was unanimously elected by uh, the incoming 20-member board of directors of the PCCI during the recent PCCI annual meeting. Ambassador, Ambassador Yu, Yuiko, who will occupy the position for two years, shared that his presidency will focus on entrepreneurship and innovation. He believes that these are essential catalysts that will supercharge the Philippine economy in the coming years. Furthermore, he will initiate projects to assist local government units to implement smart city technologies that will not only improve efficiency but reduce corruption as well. The new PCCI president has served as the special envoy of the president with the rank of Ambassador for Trade Relations for Eastern Europe, then North America and Latin America. He was President for the Confederation of Asia Pacific Chamber of Commerce and Industry from 2010 to 2014, the fourth Filipino President in this organization's 50-year history. He got his undergraduate degree in Business and Economics at the St. Mary's College of California, and he graduated from the Wharton Graduate School of Business with an MBA in Banking and Finance. Ambassador Yuiko is currently involved in the property business through various land banking activities, joint ventures, and partnerships. And he has organized the Center of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, a dynamic ecosystem that provides workspace funding, coaching, workshops, and mentorship. All right, so let's all welcome Ambassador Benedicto. Thank you very much for that nice introduction. Honorable Benjamin Giocno, Governor, Banco Central ng Pilipinas. Mr. Ferdinand Tansinko, Senior EVP, Metrobank. Mr. Dante Klink Ang, the second President and CEO, the Manila Times officers and staff of the Manila Times, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Dante Klink Ang II for the invitation to speak in the Manila Times Mid-Year Economic Review. Coming from the private sector, I will be sharing what we in PCCI have been doing to help our members survive the community quarantines that have dealt a severe blow to our economy. But first, let me share with you some relevant information about PCCI. PCCI is the largest umbrella organization of businesses in the country with an estimated 30,000 direct and indirect members, 23% of our membership is comprised of large firms. The remaining 77% are MSMEs. We have organized local chambers per geographical area, the National Capital Region, NCR, North Luzon, South Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. 
Each area is headed by an area director, vice president, supported by regional governors and local chamber presidents. We have more than 200 local chamber presidents. Uh, you, you will notice uh, that we have on the map the Philippines and those dots represent the local representations of uh, PCCI all over the Philippines. To concretize the roadmap, we launched a webinar series called Roadmap to Recovery, which was organized on three fronts. First is the Tayo Tayo Pilipinas Foresight Forum, a series of e-forums with policymakers on economic recovery programs and opportunities under the new economy. We had an interesting discussion at our general membership meeting in April with Trade Secretary Ramon M. Lopez, Economic Planning Secretary Carl Kendrick T. Chua, and Labor Secretary Silvestre Bellio III, who talked about post-lockdown economic scenarios, short-term and long-term economic implications, the new normal and economic stimulus programs that will bring the economy back on track. We had another forum with Congressman Joey Salceda who talked on the Philippine Economic Stimulus Act, now known as the Accelerated Recovery and Investment Stimulus Act or ARISE, which we had pushed to be included in the priority measure of the president. Currently, we are undertaking dialogues with our local chambers to assess the impact of COVID-19 on their members' business operations and generate recommendations to help accelerate the recovery process. In the pipeline are dialogues with our industry partners. Second is the Business Recovery and Resilience Series which was co-organized by PCCI as part of the DTI-led MSME Week. It was a comprehensive one-week program that focused on capacitating MSMEs to build their resilience by making data available, mentoring them to craft and implement business recovery and resiliency plans, and to improve their access to finance. And third, and I believe most important, was this Innovation at PH webinars to support the transition of micro and small enterprises to the digital marketplace. This series is basically a how-to platform where our members learn how to make use of online selling and marketing platforms like Lazada, and eventually to be able to create their own websites to reach a wider market. If there is one positive thing that came out of the lockdowns, it accelerated the adoption of technology to adapt to the dynamism of the business environment and the changing consumer behavior. PCCI programs. <clears throat> To help in the recovery of our members, we have been implementing our own initiatives. One, partnership with a small business corporation to guarantee loans for PCCI members. We are making the same arrangement with the Philippine Guarantee Corporation. PCCI has engaged an expert to help our members restructure their loans or apply for fresh loans with banks and other non-bank financial institutions. This expert, by the way, used to work for a bank, so he knows in and out of the bank, he knows the attitude of the bank, so I hope that uh, he will be of assistance to our MSMEs. Pinas Muna Tayo campaign to stimulate the growth of domestic consumption and jumpstart the economy by promoting local products, services, and tourist destinations. The president echoed our call yesterday, encouraging domestic tourism instead of going abroad. We have a partnership with the Anti-Red Tape Authority to ensure 
seamless transaction of business with the LGUs. This is critical considering the many restrictions we have to grapple as we go along our day-to-day -day business. On August 5, the ARTA and partner agencies will be signing a joint memorandum circular to impose the mandatory online filing and processing of application of permits, licenses, and gate passes for release of cargoes at the ports, as well as online payment of fees and dues. This, I would say, is another successful outcome of our advocacies where we have been working with ARTA, the Department of Trade and Industry, and the Bureau of Customs to facilitate port logistics. PCCI will be a witness to the signing of the agreement. And we have our innovation webinar series to leverage the internet economy, which has been the economic lifeline of MSMEs. On the area of policy advocacies to accelerate the economic recovery process, we in PCCI continue to champion the following measures that need either legislative or executive action. One, for Congress to immediately pass the corporate recovery and tax incentives for enterprise or create act and the arise to revive the faltering economy. For the national government to, one, declare the resumption of economic activities, of course, following social distancing, health and sanitation protocols. Yesterday, during a, a Zoom meeting with uh, Secretary Roque, he said, okay, 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 I get it. We have to open the economy. So there you go. I don't know what happens after that. In relation to the resumption of economic activities, we have to expand the representation of the private sector, if possible, to the IATF, so that we will be included in planning and formulating guidelines on quarantine measures. So, you know, the IATF need not listen to us or need not implement what we have to say, but we would like to be able to make the suggestions because we believe that we, the front, we are in the front lines of business. So we will be able to tell them or give them some tips that would make the implementation of the policies more effective and efficient. We would like to see an increase in the credit facilities for MSMEs. We would like to see the farm fishing areas to market roads, agri and aquaculture infrastructure in the build, build, build priority projects. Accelerate the automation and integration of government transactions and processes relating to business permitting and licensing, which have become crucial amid COVID-19 and physical distancing. I now conclude by saying that we in PCCI acknowledge the proactiveness of the BSP under Governor Diokno, which has been very quick to respond and support the needs, not just of MSMEs, but of the economy as a whole. We further welcome the pronouncement of President Duterte to pump prime MSMEs and to implement paperless transactions in government. No one knows when the COVID-19 pandemic will end. In the meantime, what we should do is to learn how to coexist with this pandemic in a manner that not only will we survive, but we will come out of this much stronger than before. Thank you very much and good morning. Thank you, Ambassador uh, Benedicto Yuiko. So that's a great, uh, you, know, uh, you know, insights on the uh, pandemic. Innovation is indeed necessary to jumpstart our economy. 
our next uh, reactor uh, is Mr. Fernand Antonio A. Tancinco, or Toto. He is the Senior Executive Vice President and Treasurer of the Metro Bank and Trust uh, Company. He has oversight of the bank's financial market sector covering treasury, wealth management, private banking, institutional investors, and asset management. He also currently serves as the Vice Chairman of the Board of, for AXA Philippines and advisor to the Board of First Metro Investment Corporation and Metrobank China Limited. Prior to joining Metrobank in 2007, he was the Treasurer, Head of Global Markets, and Co-Head of the Wholesale Bank of the Philippine Branch of Standard Chartered Bank from 1997 to 2007. He was Vice President and Head of the Local Currency Desk of Solid Bank Corporation from 1993 to 1997 and a dealer in the Treasury Group of Bank of Philippine Islands from 1988 to 1993. Toto holds a Chartered Financial Analyst or CFA designation from the CFA Institute and passed the Electrical Engineering Licensure Examinations. He earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical Engineering from the University of the Philippines. He attended the Advanced Management Program at the Wharton School University of uh, Pennsylvania, the, the AXA Fine uh, Program in IMD, the General Manager's Leadership uh, Program at SAID uh, Business School, University of Oxford, Oxford, and International Management Program at INSEAD in France. He was the National Achievement for Finance Awardee by the UP Alumni Engineers in 2016. Toto is an active contributor to the development of the financial markets in the Philippines. He's a member of the Bankers Association of the Philippines Capital Markets Development Committee as Vice Chairman and Member of the Open Market Committee. Let's all welcome Mr. Fernand Antonio Tancinco. Um, let me uh, put to you some of the recent events. Um, Governor Jokno mentioned earlier that he expects economic growth to uh, range between negative 3.4 to negative 2%. And I've heard some analysts say that the growth could go as bad as 10% GDP. So let's put this into context. What does a 2.3 to 2%, a 3.4 to 2% mean? And what does a 10% worst case mean? Um, some people said that, oh, this is as bad as World War II. But I don't think that this is the case. In World War II, 70% um, of our GDP was devastated as the war destroyed a lot of our infrastructure. So definitely that's not it. For those of you who are um, young enough, the, the, the true boomers can remember, um, the Aquino assassination in 1982 to 1983 actually caused our economy to decline by 10.5%. For the Gen X and the, the younger generation, Maybe you can relate more to the Asian financial crisis that actually caused a 12.3% decline in our economy. And for the millennials, I think this is what you would probably recall. The global, Asian, the global financial crisis in 2008 to 2009 was actually a 2.7% decline in our GDP. So um, within the range of what Governor Jacno mentioned, this is going to feel like a global financial crisis wherein, you know, it was painful. A lot of our investment portfolios went down, but the pain was manageable. And at the worst case, this can be similar to the Asian financial crisis of 97 to 98. Um, next slide, please. Now, unfortunately, the pain of this uh, COVID crisis is not distributed uniformly into our economy. Some of the industries are going to suffer much more than others. In fact, some are going to grow. And we're seeing that the highest hit of the industries are heavy manufacturing, light manufacturing, transportation and storage, basically where you would require a lot of people to come in. And especially if you would look at um, the discretionary spending like recreation, that, I think, would have to bear a bigger brunt of the pain. Having said that, um, if you look at other sectors, which is not very concentrated on the urban areas, agriculture, mining, uh, information, technology, the impact will be much less. 
And if you move down the, the line to the basics, the utilities, you probably will not see any impact or probably even show some growth. So what, what are we saying? In the next slide, you would see that this COVID crisis is a crisis of the urban areas because the ones that are really affected by an ECQ or MECQ is the cities. And in the other areas of the country where the uh, people are less congested, the impact is much, much less felt. So the two biggest uh, areas that we think will get hardest hit will be manufacturing and wholesale and retail trade. And you would see this in the malls that will stand empty and manufacturing where uh, the people cannot go into their workplaces um, to, to work. So this is actually a lopsided crisis where in certain areas will get hit while certain areas will feel some pain but not as much. Now, if we go to the next slide, we can see that we are seeing some good signs and we really support and um, uh, encourage the impact of what Governor Jokmo said and the BSP and our economic managers and what they've done for the country. I think they're doing the right thing. And if we look at the Purchasing Managers Index, which is a leading indicator uh, in, in the economic terms, a leading indicator is an early sign that the economy is picking up. We can see that the index has gone to near levels prior to the lockdowns. So what does this tell us? That purchasing managers are starting to buy for inventory again in the confidence that demand is going to pick up. So with this, I think that um, this is a good sign um, for our economy that confidence is starting to uh, return. And this phenomenon is not only in the Philippines, but also in other ASEAN countries. And if you, but I uh, rather than, let's say, uh, encourage people to jump out and say, hey, this is over, I'd like to caution you. People talk about V-shaped recovery, which is a quick recovery back to normal levels after a period of pain. We in Metro Bank subscribe to a gradual U-shaped recovery. And why is this so? Because the means of production, the pain that has been encouraged, the workers that have been laid off, the, the companies that had to go out because they could not sustain operation will take time to rebuild. And so we want to caution everybody to gird for a longer pain. If you're running through your last reserves in, in this period, um, we have to think in terms of a marathon rather than a sprint. We have to keep our resources as long as possible because we feel that it will take time. Um, having said that, we feel that by 2021, we should see the uh, recovery. And I think uh, if even if we see a drop of 2 to 3% this year, we should see a very strong recovery in 2021. Also, look at the fact that there's still, we're looking at a 6 5 ratio at the end, a 6 5 index at the end of the year. And we're seeing opportunities to buy the index um, if it crosses about two standard deviations or around 5,000 level. So perhaps buy at that level, um, but um, be very cautious and selective on your investment choices. Now, on the next slide, we would see that the peso has been appreciating. Yesterday, it closed below 49.20. And we think that this trend will continue, although our year-end forecast is still at around 50.10. Um, and I'd like to also caution a lot of us who is cheering the strength of the peso. While it is a good thing that um, the peso is strengthening and also a vote of confidence, by the international community on the peso, we have to remember that our source of competitiveness is a competitive foreign exchange rate. The U.S. is, per is uh, purposely devaluing its currency to gain competitive edge. 
and we shouldn't fall into the trap of allowing our currency to appreciate and get that disadvantage. Um, our BPOs, our OFWs, and our exports are dependent on a competitively properly priced peso. So we're looking at around 50 by the end of the year, but uh, gradual strengthening to around 49 level by 2021-2022. So we hope that um, uh, the peso can be kept stable, but uh, the strength of the peso will be driven more by the weakness of the dollar rather than the inherent strength of the peso. And I hope that we can be prudent about the strength of our peso. So in summary, our key, our key points. First, we expect a gradual recovery. Guys, gear up for a long uh, recovery. Conserve your resources, keep yourself healthy. Um, recovery will not come overnight. But number two is, market confidence is returning and we have to take advantage of this market confidence. Number three is we applaud the measures of the central bank and the national government in its efforts, especially in its um, fiscal and monetary stimulus. And we think that this is the right thing to do, but we need to let allow these measures to take effect. And we should um, uh, look at this uh, as a long-term solution rather than a quick fix. And um, the fourth point we would like to make is that let's have confidence in the economy. There are green shoots coming out and there's reason for optimism. Past the lockdown, we will start to build. And hopefully when the infrastructures are in place, the economy will be stronger than ever. So, in behalf of Metro Bank, thank you again for giving me the opportunity to speak to you. And I hope you'd have a fruitful day. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Tansinko. A lot of insights there. So our uh, program, uh, our event is uh, streaming live in various social media platforms. And we have opened this to uh, a Q&A uh, to uh, the viewers in social media. I would uh, like to read one question uh, uh, to uh, Governor Jokno and probably to the rest of the reactors, no? uh, Mr. Tansinko and uh, Ambassador. There's a question here from Marty Panganiban. What is the effect of the current state of COVID in the Philippines to our economy for the rest of the year? Does the 2021 recovery uh, forecast consider vaccine availability or unavailability? Governor Jokno? As I said, oh, we have to learn to live with the virus. I think the, uh, the worst is over. I think we have now built enough capacity so that uh, whenever there is a uh, maybe not a wave, but uh, higher incidence of, of uh, the COVID-19, we won't impose lockdowns anymore. There will be targeted, uh, say, barangay level uh, mm. Uh, lockdowns, but no more, no more national lockdowns. So we are now on the way to recovery at this point. That we have hit the the second quarter. To me, that's the worst quarter, but we're now moving towards a recovery. All right. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you, Mr. Tansinko. Another question from our uh, viewers, no? uh, from Jay Baxal. No? So kudos to Governor Jokno. Uh, so the macro perspective is being laid well. Uh, how do we cascade these financial policies and positive outlook to reach consumers and MSMEs? So Governor Jokno, uh, any insight on this? And then uh, uh, Ambassador Yuyuiko, no, you can also comment. We have actually uh, given the uh, banking industry, especially the micro, small and medium enterprises, a lot of relief measures. For example, uh, one of our innovative a measure is to consider or allow the use of new loans to micro, small, and medium enterprises as part of the of their compliance with the reserve requirement. And you know, as a result of this, uh, this is on top of the cut in the reserve requirement. On top, uh, as a result of this, uh, the recent numbers show that nine, about 90 banks actually lent out something like 70 billion pesos. For for the micro, small, and medium enterprises, so we're helping uh, 
the banks so they can help the, the clients. Right? That's basically what we've done. Okay, thank you, Governor Giotto. Uh, Ambassador, do you have any insight on this? You know, how does this cascade to uh, MSMEs and consumers? Well, uh, <clears throat> this is not my opinion, but I have actually just finished my survey of uh, all of over 100 chapters all over the Philippines. And they are still complaining that uh, the banks uh, that they will deal with are not really helping them at all. Mm -hmm. So I said, are, are you sure? Because I know Governor Jokno has already given a lot of incentives mm -hmm. to the banks so that they will uh, put down interest rates or defer in case of restructuring. But sorry, Governor, not one told me that uh, they are being given the benefits of what you have already given to the banks. Mm -hmm. that, that's what they, they, they told me. Because this is a very critical issue for them, the financial support from the government, particularly BSP. And I told them, yeah, I keep on telling them, no, 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 I know that already the loans to MSMEs is now counted as part of the bank's reserve requirements. So somehow this has to translate uh, to the loans to you and so on and so forth. Sorry, but uh, the, the report from the field is that it has not yet filtered down to them. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, uh, go, uh, Ambassador. So uh, last question to uh, uh, Governor. So uh, mm -hmm. could you comment on President Duterte's sauna earlier this week? No? So there was an allusion to uh, the creation of an asset management company. Yeah, we're we're uh, that's part of the so-called fist. Okay, uh, that's that's similar to what they've done in as a result of the Asian financial crisis. We are going to create an asset management corporation where banks may then transfer some of their non-performing loans, so they can the, the banks can then be healthy again, or in case there is uh, some some problems, and they can they can resume their their. Uh, their useful duty, which is to intermediate between depositors and borrowers. So that, that's a way of uh, uh, improving the financial situation of those banks which are having problems with, their, with some, some of their loans. So we are strongly in, uh, supporting that bill. And uh, the uh, idea is to give that asset corporation some fiscal incentives so they will be encouraged to absorb some of the non-performing loans of commercial banks. Yeah, uh, another question, uh, Governor Jogna. Do you have any reaction on what was not said uh, during the SONA, particularly uh, federalism? But uh, I have no... I think at this time that is the least of our worry. I think we have to be focused on, on the pandemic and that we have to uh, <clears throat> we have to think of other measures that will make the Philippines stronger after this crisis, and we have listed some of those measures. Uh, I think uh, every day counts. I think we should really focus on the things, and uh, we have a long list of legislative action. And unfortunately, that uh, federalism is not part of that list. Mm, all right. All right. Great. Great. All right. So uh, great insights from uh, uh, Governor Jokno. Uh, uh, I, know, I believe, uh, you know, you need to uh, uh, attend another engagement, uh, Governor. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, but, uh, you know, we have some questions from uh, the audience, uh, you know, to the rest of the reactors. So, Ambassador, you know, there was a question earlier. You know, what's your uh, prospect on unemployment? and uh, during the rest of the year and uh, even next year? Well, uh, the, for, for unemployment, uh, I see that uh, it will continue to get worse. That is the report I'm getting in the field. Unless uh, business actually opens up with a uh, certain degree of uh, safety, uh, medical safety, and so on and so forth. So. The consumer confidence is not there. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people don't. Even if, for example, the malls are open, they're not going to the mall. So, until such time that the consumer confident is confident again, uh, we will not see 
the level of business going up. And if that's not going to go up, then uh, we, we are not going to see employment figures back up as well. So the, the key here is consumer confidence. The key is uh, businesses to recover slowly. And uh, f- the key is for us to manage uh, the COVID crisis. Mm-hmm. And all of this together will actually bring back the employment. All right. Uh, yeah, thank you. So, Mr. Tansinko, uh, any insight on consumer confidence? No, what do you see uh, in the horizon? Uh, yeah, I think that uh, consumer confidence uh, requires a, uh, uh, a, a view of how the, your, your next paycheck will come. Mm. So, uh, the consumer confidence will come when we can secure people's future and give them some certainty. And I think that uh, the best way to do this is to uh, reconfigure our businesses to give that people cer- some certainty. Um, while I'm very happy at the programs that are being initiated now about these do- this dole outs, I think nobody is really confident that this will continue forever. So um, I know that opening up businesses is, um, is controversial now, but in one form or another, we have to do it. But for us in the business community, we also have to rethink the way we do business to give people that certainty and to bring back consumer confidence. Mm. So it will come once they, we see a light at the end of the tunnel. And I hope that we can give it, provide it to our people soon. All right. Thank you. So our program has come to a close. So we would like to thank our keynote speaker, BSP Governor Benjamin Jokno. Uh, Reactor Ambassador Benedicto Yoyuiko and uh, Reactor Mr. Fernand Antonio Tansinko of Metro Bank. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. Uh, so we would like to thank our uh, sponsors as well, no? Coex Star, Metro Bank, ATC, and uh, our supporters, no? Citibank, Hungry Workhorse, as well as Metro Bank. And thank you to uh, Manila Times for hosting this timely and relevant uh, forum. So thank you everyone and uh, you know stay safe and uh, you know let's be positive uh, with the outlook of our country. Thank you.